Hello, welcome to another sim update. Yes, this is 0.53b of the sim and I've put a couple of pretty big updates in which in retrospect was a bit of a mistake because I really did bite off a little bit more than I could chew by doing two major things at once. But anyway, let's jump straight into the sim and I'll show you what we're dealing with. Well, aside from the normal bug fixes and stuff which went in, which basically means that the whole thing runs a little bit better now, um, some of the major things that we did was to separate out the rates. Uh, this was quite a common uh, request. Previously we had a single set of rates, so your Super Rate, your RC Rate and your RC Expo would apply to Pitch, Roll uh, and Your. So that's now been separated out. The, the, that wasn't a problem in the code, that was really quite easy because I was just applying the same set to, to each sort of axis so I just had to separate those out. The problem I had was how are we going to display this? How are we going to make this friendly to show you? Because previously um, we used the numeric keys like 5 to 0 to set certain things and it would come up on your screen and you could sort of alter it on the fly like that. But what I'm finding when playing with uh, people online is they often can't remember all the keys. I, I remember the keys because I had to put them there and I spent so much time testing it and stuff, it's like embedded in my brain. But for other people, um, they can't they can't remember it. So I thought, if I can get stuff away from remembering that many keys, all the better. So what I used is the flight assist menu. Previously, the flight assist menu was kind of there for a beginner, uh, mostly, to say, look, if you're a beginner, here's a beginner rate. If you're an intermediate, do this. Here's your quad power. Here's if you're flying with radio and stuff. But it would show figures up at the side of the screen, beta flight settings, and if you were a beginner, those were just a bunch of meaningless figures for you. So I thought what we do is replace those. So if we go into the sim now, one difference is the amount you'll see. If you hit return, you used to see um, everything uh, about your, your setup. Now there's less there, but the flight assist menu has always been A, and if we press that now, what we do is we get a flight assist slash rate setup. Um, you'll notice there's a quad in the middle. The, the main sim's been paused. And what we can do is we can, similar to how Betaflight does it actually in rate setup, we can twiddle our sticks and we can see the reaction of the quad. And you'll notice we've got, for each of the axes, we've got a color. So uh, roll is red and as we move the stick, we can see the dot uh, move along the graph and we can see how the quad reacts to that. Uh, ditto uh, pitch is green and your is blue. And what you can do, you can set these up to your heart's content completely differently. So at the moment you can see that I'm set up with a maximum of a thousand degrees a second, which is quite high. I noticed that when Betaflight calculates stuff, it doesn't go above two and a half thousand. I've decided to top out at 2000. So if you try and go past 2000, your sliders will stop moving. So, because I can hold this with my left hand, if we look at your here, your is quite fast, quite early on, so we can do something like, uh, let's say we want it moving really slow at this. We can move that RC Expo all the way up, and you can see how slow that goes, and we can move our stick all the way over, and then we just got that ridiculous amount there and we can obviously turn that down so then the rate is tiny slow and then we can change that again with the super I mean you can you can mess with these to your heart's content um, and you know I suggest you do the, the biggest difference uh, for me is separating out the your I think where your I think tended to be a little bit too fast when it had the same rate I sort of moved that down a bit so you can really mess with those and by literally just holding your stick and saying, is that what I want for, for all the way over? How much do I want for nothing? And if you want to, you know, you can completely get rid of Super 8 and you can have a completely linear stick, which would be, that's the wrong one, which would be really odd. But if you want to see how it feels without any Expo or Super 8, knock yourself out. Now, as far as the predefined rates go, um, I've taken away the numbers because I didn't think that made any sense and I've taken away where it says are you using a game controller or a radio because what happens um, if we go to the radio joystick setup it's looking at the stick type you set up here so if you've set the gamepad 
then it will do your rates as a gamepad and if you set radio um, it will do them as a radio so at the moment we've got if we say um, we want beginner and quarter power low and we have to say show rates and then it will load the rates in there you you just saw me like move everything around and nothing happened and that's because um, I did all this and then I sort of left it and came back into it you can you can move stuff around to your heart's content nothing happens until you say save rates at that point if you go back in the rates are saved so it, it's ditto if you're looking at sort of uh, let's say one intermediate medium uh, then you'd have to save the rates before they got there. You don't again see what the actual quad power is on the screen there because I felt that number wasn't important and if you wanted to change it that is still on the number keys. So yeah that that is um, one of the big updates that is uh, the new flight assist or rate setup. Now one thing to bear in mind that if you're playing on the online game and you're flying around and you want to go change your rates if you hit A because the game doesn't pause you will carry on <laughs> just doing what you're doing bear that in mind at the moment I was just flying so I'm still flying but obviously the way to do it is probably when you're just sat on the ground okay and the other big feature we did was uh, quad ball and the quad ball I mentioned previously and I put a beta out and a bunch of people tried it and we got some useful feedback and we've done some stuff here first off apologies it's still a pretty crappy little icon there I was gonna do an animated thing and then I realized I hadn't messed with the animation component at all and then I'd just spend probably a week messing around with that and I thought that's a bit of a delay for what is just a, a little cosmetic stuff so I haven't done that yet but I, I will spruce it up at some point. So we've now done different things uh, in Quad Ball. First off there's this UI menu here and you, you can obviously start the game, um, look at records and that. And I wanted to, to just mention a couple of things because rather than say if you want to know how to play this look at the wiki, although it, it's going to be on the wiki, I wanted to put a little sort of mini guide as a sort of how to play. Uh, not in any great detail you sort of go through and it, it's got a couple of things about like what the force fields are and it's got the extra keys and stuff like that and some sort of general hints and tips um, and I wanted to know if that was more useful having some sort of in-game miniature little guides like that about things rather than saying read the wiki because in my experience and looking at the questions I get back it seems to be very rare that people ever look at the instructions and like you know I don't I was an engineer so instructions pff, they're for amateurs you just you just work it out so if I had small little guides to certain things for example I think um, perhaps something that comes up a lot is like what what the remap controls and calibrate sticks do what does all these things do here do we need something here that says help with this page and a little sort of inline basics about what goes on. Do you think that'd be useful or do you think people still wouldn't read it? So the game itself, um, not an awful lot has changed. There's still 10 levels to deal with. What I did following some of the feedback is change the ratio between the gravity and power. Um, it's, I think, made the game overall slightly easier and more playable. Uh, the quad will come off as quite heavy and quite underpowered but this was because it wouldn't be so jumpy so you've got an awful lot of throttle range you can use without the quad going like absolutely mental so a, a lot of the time you will be flying quite gently and trying to sort of get a hover and that's why I thought less sensitivity on that throttle stick was a good thing. The other things um, I did in the game if we just start it up is now you can pause the game at any time just hit escape and you will go back to that main menu and from that main menu you can do things like consult the how to play guide like what is that key again let me look for the key oh it's this key and, and then you can go back to the game and do that you've also got the flight assist menu by pressing A and you can set your rates up there if you have a look at the rates you will see that they're very gentle uh, the other important thing to note is that the rates used in the game are completely separate from the sim so if you've got your sim quad set up to be like mega powerful and like you know thousand degrees a second and you've got a 65 degree camera angle then you don't need to think about that because when you come into the quad ball game it, it's got its own set and it's by default it's got a zero degree angle and it's got some very gentle rates um, and even the the predefined rates here 
um, if we look at sort of even expert you'll notice we're only looking at 300 degrees uh, a second and what I've mainly done is make things snappier on the yaw and stuff like that and for beginners everything is super gentle like really gentle if we <laughs> if we move that all the way we hardly move but when you're starting out in this game if you're not super experienced in it you need things to go quite gentle as mentioned before the power and the gravity is set within the game and that means everybody has to fly under the same conditions and as this is time based I felt that was quite important if you missed a previous video about it it's it's all about trying to get the ball in the goal and you do that by whacking the quad into the ball and trying to then get the ball into the goal and what happens is the uh, levels become more tough as time goes on you get a nice little replay here if you've got those blue bits that is a force field and that will help the ball bounce off as it did at the end there so you don't lose it there are levels without force fields so it becomes much harder because you have to make sure the ball doesn't fall off etc etc everything about it is about being able to control the quad well enough to control the ball uh, and get to the end of the level and do it in the fastest time and you will have a record of your own times here to see how well you can do it all you've got individual stage times and then you've got an all stages time your all stages time is not simply your very fastest time on each one added up it's your complete playthrough through 10 levels now because um, I had launched this on beta on Steam first I also messed with leaderboards on Steam I thought oh can I, can I use this to record time so people can compare easier and the quick answer was yes so if you're on a Steam version any time you record will automatically update to the leaderboard and you can see how you compare against others now I was going to put this within the game but that is a massive rabbit hole to fall now because it's like oh what how can I show you compared to your uh, global position and then should I pull in your friends positions and see how you compare to them um, but really I need more people in the leaderboards to sort of think about that data and think about how I'm going to pull it out so I didn't want to do it yet and then I would get just sucked down the idea of doing achievements and statistics and stuff like that so if you want to see how you compare on the leaderboard I've put a link in the uh, description so you can click on that and there's a little drop down so you can go between various levels and see who's winning someone's already beat me in two of the levels my times aren't super quick there are ways of getting really really quick um, because of the way the gravity and power set up it's now much more easier to get under the ball and give it quite a quite a nice little carry um, a proportion of the map but um, skill of doing that and risk versus reward is all important and it all sort of ties together so I hope you enjoy that um, and the last thing to say about that is we've put some extra little bits in so if you press the M button you you can now fly in angle mode so if I if I fly up and I can put my stick right over and I, I won't go crazy and I'll come back to center so again that's just to help people out that are a bit newer with this you know how do I fly a quad and that but um, for it's really not part of how I fly normal quads so try not to um, you've got the O and P buttons to do the camera angle and we've got a little bit more info about that on the uh, on the bottom there and you've got the V button which changes the field of view of your FPV lens so you can get the best possible position that you like. The flip and reset keys are still F and R and you can assign these to switches so we can still do a flip, we can still do a reset. The thing I didn't move forward is I've kept the camera angle on keys only because I noticed if you if you had that assigned to a slider you'd come into the game and instantly your camera would be up in the air and you'd you'd have to sort that out so I figured it wasn't something you'd change much in the game so I've just put that on keys and of course that camera angle will save whenever you go out and come back into the game once you've had enough you can go back to the main sim just by clicking on it uh, and then you can go and play and you'll notice your camera angle is back to normal your rates are back as they were and you're all good to go again so that's all the updates for that one um, next up well I'll probably take a week or two off because my brain hurts those were <laughs> two things that I got stuck in in various things and had to uh, do a lot of work on but in terms of what's coming up next originally I had planned to do some sort of race idea now I've, I've said many times that this isn't about racing 
and that's still true in the traditional sense I don't like I've got gates up there but they're just sort of a, a placeholder so I thought about doing uh, races or courses if you like timed courses that take in the sort of features within the map and perhaps doing things that are friendly to sort of beginner intermediates and advanced so the beginners might have two big pylons to fly through intermediates like a larger target and we wouldn't get into sort of traditional race gates uh, unless we're in advance and the idea is again to do some sort of timed courses maybe push that through into the online stuff so people can race against each other if they like but that said i was really also quite keen to rewrite the fixed wing implementation um, as i mentioned several times i'd literally just tried to work out how planes fly based on five post-it notes thinking about like if it goes up then at some point it's going to stall and it wasn't based on any maths because I can't do sums so it was just me working it out. Since that time I found a lot more stuff out there online and I still don't understand flight dynamics or air coming over wings and how that works in lift and drag and stuff and what a coefficient actually is but much cleverer people at NASA have already done that so I can crib some of that code and I noticed that code's been used in uh, other flight sims around there so that's something I kind of wanted to do because I know the people that do fly fixed wing are quite disappointed with the fixed wing implementation for me it was like hey I got it working that's pretty good but I can see certain aspects of it uh, work and others I'm like that's that's a bit off but I've just been sort of going around with it so that's that's an idea the most common requests I generally get from people aside from how do I make my radio work it's, this is how I know people don't read the wiki is could you put this type of building or this type of vehicle in or could we have a map with this in and and that in and yes I've always said I'll circle back around to maps and stuff because it's something that's if you if you like it, it it's separate to to, be, to the, how the quad flies and how it handles and everything else. It's kind of easy to bring a map in, although not easy from the sense that I have art skills of of, of nothing. Free colorblind hedgehogs in a bag, to quote Blackadder. But that said, I'm I want to do some experimentations about doing more with the map, and I'm not sure at the moment about do I expand the map and put different zones so out here is a city and out here is a forest and we've already got like a desert and a mountain so maybe there's a, an ice thing over here it's like a Mario level this isn't it <laughs> all the different environments I'm not sure I'm always at the back of my mind thinking is this gonna be okay on a, a lower spec computer because I've always wanted to make this um, quick so when you start the game it's it's there and it's just ready to go and I've always wanted to make sure it still runs on lower end computers. So I need to make sure that me doing stuff like that doesn't break it. And do I want to do that or do I want separate levels with stuff? So there's some experimentation there. But um, I'm not sure what I want to do next. I will probably put a poll up in YouTube in the next uh, few days or weeks to say, what do you want next? Uh, but if you've got an overriding strong feeling about what you want to see, you can always pop it down in the comments below. But hey, that's it for this time. I um, hope you uh, enjoy the update and uh, please play the game and uh, let me know how you feel because I'd like to do more levels and, and more different things in there. And of course, please do all that important YouTube stuff like leave a thumbs up or thumbs down, comment down below, click on the bell icon, subscribe, all that stuff. That'll be always handy. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.